By taking the case of an E. coli, we estimated numbers of various proteins that are to be found inside the cell, right. Some millions of proteins and billions of water molecules and small ions and so on and so forth. However, the thing to re realize of course, is that these numbers are sort of whatever we found, let us say there are some 10 to the power of 6 protein mo proteins and so on. Whatever numbers, these numbers that we estimated, these are sort of an average order of magnitude numbers. In reality, the numbers of proteins, if, a, if I think of a particular protein, the number of copies of that protein inside the cell is sort of continuously changing, right. And this is one such, there is a figure that sort of tries to estimate that. So, this is Colobacter, this is a bacteria, there is the cell cycle of that. So, it this total cell cycle from birth to cell division is around 150 minutes, so two and a half hours um, and these are the various phases of the cell cycle G1, S phase and G2 phase. Okay. So, what these people have done is that they have looked at clusters of proteins or clusters of uh, mRNA rather corresponding to various proteins that are active at different uh, that are active and they see when these mRNAs or these DNA segments, these are these genes basically they are active as a function of the cell cycle time ok. So, this curve over here is your cell cycle time from 0 to 150 minutes. Over here are these are different gene clusters and different gene clusters are responsible for different tasks. So, for example, cluster 1 might be replication, cluster 2 might be biogenesis then there are clusters for chromosome segregation, DNA replication and so on and so forth. And these colors represent 2 is when they are upregulated, uh, sorry this yellow is when they are upregulated, blue is when they are downregulated. So, what you can see is that not all of these are sort of upregulated or active at the same time of the cell cycle. For example, this cluster over here clusters 8 and 9, these are sort of active towards the end of the cell cycle, not so much towards the beginning. Whereas, these clusters are sort of active towards the initial phase of the cell cycle, not so much towards the end. And depending you can then say that which clusters are active when. So, for example, this one is active towards the initial part of the cell cycle, this chromosome segregation which happens when the cell is dividing that is active towards the end of the cell cycle, then the cell division of course, is absolutely at the end and so on. So, if you basically if you classify genes according to their functions or class genes or RNA or proteins whatever, you classify them according to their function, they are not always on, they are not always produced. The numbers fluctuate as the cell goes through its cell cycle depending on the function of that particular protein. And this is something that one must keep in mind that if I say that there are 1000 copies, uh, it does not mean that the cell has 1000 copies of that protein throughout that cell cycle in some case in some during some time of the cell cycle it might during some time of the cell cycle it might be completely absent. So, that is one sort of thing to show that the cell is in constant flux, things are constantly changing inside the cell. And therefore, one must look at kinetics of these things uh, protein concentrations and so on in order to see what effects these have on the cell cycle. So, that is number one proteins or mRNAs. Another thing for example, is this cytoskeleton. So, again we have talked about microtubules and actins, this is again an electron micrograph showing that the green filaments over here are the microtubules, the red spots are these actin filaments, the blue is the nucleus, so that we do not worry about. But these actin, this cytoskeletal filaments, the actins and the microtubules they are extremely dynamic, they polymerize and they depolymerize the rate of polymerization or the rate of depolymerization may depend again on the state of the cell cycle itself. For example, microtubules when the cell is dividing it assembles to form the spindle pole and it pulls apart the chromosomes and so on. So, again we will look at these how to deal with this, this dynamic instability of the cytoskeletal filaments, the fact that they are constantly in a state of flux, they are polymerizing, depolymerizing, 
over the next few lectures. So, just to remind this was the structure of the microtubules if you remember uh, micro the basic subunit are these tubulin dimers uh, alpha tubulin and a beta tubulin. Because there is a structural asymmetry we can assign a plus end and a minus end. So, th this the one where it nucleates from this microtubule organizing center microtubule organizing center that is the minus end generally and then you have this microtubule growing out of there. So, the microtubule consists of 13 filaments like this called protofilaments. Each protofilament is made up of these alpha beta tubulin subunits. And when they polymerize, they polymerize like this. When they depolymerize, they look slightly different, the structure is slightly different, it is sort of splayed out. And you can see this uh, hopefully, this will play again. So, if you look at these microtubules, they are they are going to some are going to be growing, some are going to be shrinking and they are going constantly going to switch from a growth phase to a shrinking phase. And like I said this is very important in the case of the spindle formation, I am sorry the picture is not very clear not even over there. So, these yellow things are your chromosomes which are going to be pulled apart, these green lines are the microtubules which originate from the spindle pole. The structure is like this. Here you have your two spindle poles, your microtubules originate like this, and here are your chromosomes. The microtubules come and attach, and then they pull the two copies of the chromosomes towards the two poles. If you look at the lengths as a function of time coming, so if you look at the microtubule length as a function of time. you can see that it grows for some time. So, the length grows and then suddenly it undergoes uh, depolymerization. So, it the length sort of drops very close to 0 and again it will grow and again it will drop at some time. So, this process of switching from growth. So, this is the growth phase, the growth of the polymerization, this is the depolymerization, this, this switching is called a catastrophe, it's called a catastrophe and this switching from the depolymerization back to the growth phase is called a rescue, It's called a rescue. If you look at this curve which I cannot, so the length scales of these are very different. So, for example, growth typically happens over a time period of the order of minutes, a time period of the order of minutes. So, if you look at this curve, these lines if they continued they would be the growth phase so roughly 2 minutes, 3 minutes is what the growth phase corresponds to. Whereas, this fall this uh, this depolymerization that happens very quickly over the order of a few seconds. So, if you look at this length of this microtubule as a function of time, this is definitely not something that I would call in equilibrium. The length as a function of time is not something that is sort of roughly constant. It is constantly undergoing this sort of a flux between a growth and a catastrophe phase. And again we will try to look at how to sort of model this uh, sort of dynamics where you have this polymerization, depolymerization and switching between them. Um, the same thing happens also for actins. So, the same thing happens. So, this is an actin polymer. So, the actin again has these subunits which are called the G actin, the globular actin. They come and bind to this actin filament, and again, the actin has a structural asymmetry, it has a plus end and a minus end. And on an average, polymers will uh, more sorry, monomers will add to the plus end and they will fall off the minus end. So, this act so this process in microtubules is called dynamic instability. This process of growth and shrinkage is called dynamic instability in microtubules, in microtubules. Whereas, in actins where you have these this actin filament and you have 
addition at one end and from the other end the minus end it sort of falls off. So, this is called treadmilling. So, this is called actin treadmilling the monomers add at one end and it falls off the other end and this has various consequences. So, for example, um, if you looked at this slide it does it means what is. So, these are active processes in that they require energy. So, it refers to the state of whether it is an ATP whether the subunits have an ATP attached to them. So, whether they are hydrolyzed or not. So, whether it is an ATP state or a ADP state. So, that is true actually even in microtubules there you have GTP and GDP. So, if you will see uh, so, these are microtubules right. So, when it subunits are being added they have they are this uh, in this GTP state the triphosphate and then once they are added they actually the GTP converts to GDP. So, when they are being added they are being added in the GTP state then once they are added they convert to this GDP state and that is why if when it falls off actually the thing that comes out is GDP beta tubulin. So, there is an internal state because this is an active process there is an internal state and that is true also in the case of um, actin there is this ATP to ADP conversion uh, which is why you see those as different colors over there. I am trying to avoid that slide for the time being ah here this curve has now come. Uh, so, this was the catastrophe and the rescue. Uh, so, these are experimental plots of this microtubule length as a function of time ok. So, just to show so what effect does this uh, polymerization depolymerization have. So, this is actually a cell it is a skin cell from a fish if I remember correctly and this is moving. So, if you zoom in and if you look at this so, what happens in this leading edge is that there are these actin filaments and then there are molecular motors that move on these actin filaments. These actin filaments push against this cell membrane making the cell membrane sort of extend in this way in sort of. So, this is the this is the top view of this cell this is the side view of this cell. So, they extend these uh, what are called these lamellopodia and then they sort of crawl up along the cell surface. So, in this leading edge of this uh, cell there are these highly dense networks of actin monomers. So, these are so, th this is again an active process through an interplay of these myosin motors and these actin filaments in the polymerization of these actin filaments. A same phenomenon ok since we are on this slide anyway let me just show you that. So, this what comes over here is yellow and then slowly as the ATP becomes ADP you will see that it becomes blue over here. So, the state changes and now let me figure out how. So, this is another example of how actin polymerization can help things move. So, this is an illustration of a bacteria listeria which has invaded a cell. So, it is a infectious bacteria. So, it has invaded a cell what it does is that it takes over the actin polymerization machinery of the cell and it uses that machinery to sort of uh, move around inside the cell. So, let me try to see. So, here is the bacteria these blue things that you see are these actin filaments and as these actin filaments polymerize they sort of produce a force that pushes the bacterium like this ok. And what you are seeing over here are the in this red is marked as these actin this green is marked as this bacterium cell. So, this actin polymerization provides a force that should sort of pushes this bacteria along and this is what is known as an actin comet and again we will look at this in a little more detail when we look at actin and microtubules in subsequent classes. So, you have subunits being added over here that provides a force that sort of propels this bacteria forward. So, this is that same thing these are just snapshots of that movie um, if you look at these actin filaments there is a high density of filaments near the bacteria there is a low density of filaments. So, which are these longer lived filaments as you move further and further away from the bacteria of filaments. So, which are these longer lived filaments as you move further and further away from the bacteria. 